Hello, I'm Holly Woolnuff. I'm the editor for Collins International Primary Maths. Um, and today I'll be guiding you through the new Cambridge curriculum for primary maths and the Collins International Primary Maths course that we've created to support the new curriculum and the teachers and learners that are using it. So I'll start off by looking through the Cambridge curriculum itself and some of the key changes that teachers might want to be aware of. And then I'll look at our course, how we're supporting teachers and some of the components that will be used in the classroom. The Cambridge Primary Maths curriculum is intended to create independent learners that are able to use their maths knowledge both in the classroom and in the modern world with an emphasis on how technology can be used to communicate mathematics and used to enhance maths learning. I'll start off then by going through some of the key changes to the maths curriculum and how they might impact teachers and um, how Collins is supporting them. So generally across the course, there's been a reorganisation of strands and substrands to make them a lot more organised and better for use in the classroom. As you can see, Cambridge have reduced the number of strands and substrands across the board here from five to three and across the substrands, there are far fewer. One of the key changes to highlight is the removal of the problem solving strand, which was once a kind of standalone strand with its own objectives. This has now been replaced with thinking and working mathematically, which acts across all of the objectives and works in all of the different strands. I'll talk a little bit more about thinking and working mathematically, but that's probably the key change to be aware of for the curriculum. There's also been a streamlining of the learning objectives. There are far fewer now in the new curriculum, um, and this is because of a removal of overlaps and duplications. The mathematical content itself hasn't been reduced, it's just that it's been made more concise and more balanced across stages. Alongside that, the objectives have also been slightly rephrased so that there's more of a focus on expected learning rather than expected output. As you can see in this example, that just means a change of language from terminology like find to terminology like understand, with a focus on understanding and mastery of concepts rather than base core knowledge. There's an improved progression, both within stages and across the stages. Um, and then two key changes, which I said I'd go into, is the removal of the mental calculation strand and the removal of the problem solving strand. Firstly, with the mental calculation strategies, um, in the first edition of the first curriculum, these were more focused on um, a prescriptive approach to them with specific applications and mental strategies, whereas now Cambridge have taken a more independent learning approach so that learners can apply mental strategies in the way that they best see fit and allows them more flexibility and makes it a more personal choice for them, therefore encouraging greater um, control over their learning. And there's also the removal of problem solving and its replacement with thinking and working mathematically, which is sometimes referred to as TWM. Thinking and working mathematically is based on research by John Mason and by Cambridge Mathematics. And it's based on an idea that learners actively engage with their learning of mathematics, seeking to make sense of ideas and build connections between facts, concepts and procedures. Thinking working mathematically in the Cambridge course is presented as four pairs of characteristics. These are specialising and generalising, conjecturing and convincing, characterising and classifying, and critiquing and improving. These act as individual objectives um, and can be combined in any uh, way that the teacher sees fit for that lesson. Characteristics crucially are taught alongside other content learning objectives and are not their own strand, which is how it was structured with problem solving. Um, now, characteristics from thinking and working mathematically can be taught alongside, say, a statistics learning objective so that they're more flexibly used and are ingrained throughout the entire course. As this is such a big change for the Cambridge curriculum, it's one of the key things that we've done at Collins to make sure that our course supports teachers in using this new part of the curriculum. So now moving on to a little bit more about the Collins course itself um, and how we've built it. Obviously, we wanted to make sure that key things from the first edition that were liked by teachers were incorporated into the second edition. So we've tried to make it as similar to the first edition as possible so that it's really recognisable and not too much of a change for teachers that are already using the course. We've kept things like our classroom differentiation, which allows for greater flexibility depending on how your classes are structured and there's opportunities for different classroom organisation. So lessons move between pair work, independent work and whole class work to allow for more interesting structures. 
So in terms of the Collins International Primary Maths key features and what makes it such a good course to support the Cambridge framework. As I said, we've got the differentiated activities and lots of different classroom organisation to for greater teaching flexibility. And our key um, focus has been the thinking and working mathematically characteristic coverage. This is incorporated across every single component and in every single unit so that teachers can feel confident when using the Collins course that they are keeping these characteristics at the heart of learners um, understanding of maths. Collins also offers a flexible scope and sequence that can act as a ready-made um, curriculum course and one that can be altered to suit the needs of individual learners, teachers and schools. So I'll now go into our components and the different features that they offer. Um, the teaching sequence we've largely kept the same as in the first edition with these five components which act across um, the different parts of the maths teaching. So we've got revise, teach, practice, apply and review. And these different sections of the lesson take part in different components, whether it be the student's book, workbook or teacher's guide. And they take place in different classroom organisation ways. So there's whole class work, individual work, pair work and group work. We've made sure that the units are all consistent across strands to enable that continuity across the curriculum. So we've got 27 units per stage um, which are split into the different substrands. And as I said, we offer the scope and sequence with a week of flexible revision teaching and the ability to customise this curriculum um, to the needs of your school. I'll now have a look at the individual components and show you some of the pages from inside. We've stuck with the core components from the first edition, the student's book, workbook and teacher's guide with the addition of the progress book. And we're also for the second edition offering eBooks of every single print book, plus the digital component, which for the second edition is offered as the teacher's resource plus. Starting off with the student books, these have all been updated comprehensively to match the new curriculum and provides explanations, worked examples and TWM activities. As with the first edition, we've got one page per lesson at all stages. And a new edition for the second edition is the introduction of a how to use this book page. This comes at the beginning of each student's book and is written in learner friendly language to enable them to work more independently and take control of their learning and gain a greater understanding of how to use the book to better their maths knowledge. We've then got the one single page per lesson layout, which again offers lots of opportunity for independent learning with the use of the keywords and a learner friendly version of the learning objective, which enables them to keep in mind the key things that they're understanding that lesson. The student's book is then split into let's learn and guided practice. So we start off with an introduction to the key concepts and then move into a worked example which offers practice of the kind of activities learners will undertake when they look at the workbook. As we have in all components, we've also included a TWM star where a lesson covers certain TWM characteristics. And for the student's book, we end with a blown up version of the Thinking and Working Mathematically star. This allows learners to constantly reference the characteristics that might be new to them and introduces the vocabulary of TWM so that they're using it consistently from stage one. Moving on to the workbooks, again, these have been updated to match the new curriculum. These provide differentiated activities to practice and consolidate objectives. Um, and we've matched the format of the first edition with one page per workbook for each lesson on stages one to two and two pages at stages three to six. As with the student's book, we've introduced the how to use this book page, again, providing that independent learner control over their um, individual understanding of how they use the book. And moving on to the workbook pages themselves, we've kept the learner friendly objective at the top to keep in mind the key concepts that they're studying in that lesson. And then we've also got the challenge levels, which we had in the first edition. These are question numbers formatted in shapes, which enable teachers to work with different levels of understanding and different ability levels, but without overt ability leveling, which is sometimes challenging for certain students. Each lesson also ends with an opportunity for self-assessment of an understanding of that lesson. And again, with the student's book, we've got TWM stars to indicate where TWM is being taught and studied. 
Moving on to the teacher's guide finally, we've updated this again to the new curriculum and this follows the complete um, five part structure of the teaching and learning sequence. Um, the teacher's guide provides revised activities, um, individual lesson plans and also a bank of resource sheets, which I'll go into. It starts off with an introduction, providing a comprehensive overview of the course, the components and the pedagogy that's gone into Collins Primary Maths. So we've got a bank of revised activities, which are a flexible set of activities that are used in the first part of the teaching and learning sequence to practice and consolidate understanding that learners already have. Each unit starts with a unit introduction, which provides a comprehensive overview of what will be covered in that unit, including common difficulties and remediation advice, um, an overview of the success criteria for that unit, and also a new introduction of promoting thinking and working mathematically, which provides an overview of the characteristics that will be taught in that lesson and tips on how to do that. Each lesson plan then goes through the five part structure of the lesson and again throughout these we've highlighted where TWM applies and appears um, and each lesson also ends with assessment for learning tips and same day intervention advice both for supporting and enriching students learning. Each unit then ends with a bank of additional practice activities which can be used flexibly throughout the week and again provides a level of autonomy for schools to adapt the lessons to their own needs. And then at the back of each teacher's guide comes a bank of resource sheets which provide useful documents to aid lesson preparation and the final part of the teacher's guide are the digital slides which support teachers and allow for independent work and also to share images with the class. The final component for Collins International Primary Maths is the digital component. This has been moved to collins.co.uk and access is available via an ebook with a password protected download. The Teachers Resource Plus provides access to a suite of digital content, which includes interactive tools and games, downloadable and editable Word and PDF versions of the print book content and slides and images for whole class display, which is all integrated within the teaching in the teacher's guide. The interactive tools and games, which provide comprehensive coverage of all of the curriculum strands, offers the opportunity for practical practice of the concepts that learners are working with and avoids the need for concrete examples, therefore offering teachers more flexibility in how they structure their lessons. I wish you every success in your teaching of the new Cambridge curriculum and one using Collins International Primary Maths.